Here we have an MSI video card. This is the 1080 Ti. It's called MSI Blower 1080 Ti. Looks like this and customer mailed in the board only. And let's read what the customer wrote. It was mailed here for either no power or no detect. Customer said, computer was purchased second hand and came with water cooling. Graphics card had metal plate resting on top with no screws. Bumped computer and believed it shorted the board. The first thing I want to do is quick physical inspection on the board to see if there's anything obvious. Uh, power connectors, 4 and 3. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. We should read 12 volts here for this. And we have another inductor down here, 12 volts for this. And we also have one all the way down at the bottom, this one here. It's for the 12 volts that is found right over here, those three pins. We also have 5 volts on this inductor, and we have 1.8 volts on this inductor. I want to do a quick physical inspection on the board. I did so many boards last week, and I gained so much knowledge on how every board is laid out. I mean, right here on my bench, I have, I would say, about 7 boards that I'm working on. I told Big Boss to open as many graphics cards as he can and put them on my bench and I want to go over them one by one. We have a lot and I have to go through them and finish them. I have one here, I have one here, I am working on this one here, I am working on this one here, I have one over here, and I have one over here. So all those I was hoping to get done by today, but unfortunately, unfortunately that was not the case. Now I thought, let me finish working on this. Most of those boards are expedited and that's why I wanna to try to finish them as soon as possible. But my point is, the reason I showed you all those boards is no two boards are alike, unless it's the same make and model. Every make and model, they have different layout on their boards. They use different MOSFETs sometimes, uh, different components. And I'm trying to acquire as many donor boards as I possibly can. I have a lot in stock right now so that if I find a faulty component on this board, I can extract that component from a donor board and put it over here. We have some of the cards that we were not able to fix for customers and they gave them to us so we can use those for parts. But uh, let's continue with the inspection. So right now when you see me doing measurements and I tell you this should be 12 volts, this should be 1.8 volts or 5 volts or 12 volts or whatever the case may be is because I'm taking measurements. I take measurements of components and I write down the values. I write down the values in ohms and I write down the values when I test for voltage. So that later on when I get the same board, I can compare values and I can figure out what's going on. And that's what I've been doing for the past week. We have, I would say, over 120 graphics cards that we need to fix. And uh, <laughs> I need to go fast. I need to really speed up. I have not worked on this specific model before. So let's see. Let's go over the board and see if we see anything obvious, customer believes that he shorted out the board. I mean, shorted out the board is just a term customers use to tell you that there is a problem with the motherboard. All right, so far I'm not seeing any blown missing components. Okay, so nothing is obvious. Okay, meter in ohms mode. And let's start here. And uh, we are reading 150K. 433 ohms. I'm just checking to see if we have a short anywhere. And we do not. And if we check our PAX rail here. And we are reading 5 ohms. 5 ohms. That's too low. Uh, 
uh, VMAM coils, 40 ohms, should be the same, 41 ohms, and very low reading here, almost like a short, 0 0.5 ohms, which is normal. It's not that short, but it's very low. And if we go to the far top left, we get a reading of 230 ohms. Let's test our 12 volt line here. 449, we don't have a short, and the 3.3 volt line, and no short. All right, so it's safe to plug this cord and test. Maybe we can do this. And let's turn that board on. And the board is on. And while at it also, why not check that board under a thermal cam? Six beeps. Six beeps on this board indicates that the video card is not being detected. So looking at the thermal cam, I see heat possibly on back of the board down on the bottom and some heat on the GPU. We did not inspect back of the board, but the thermal cam is showing a possible problem on back of the board. Let's switch over to the thermal cam. Look at this right there. Heat is not coming from the front, it's coming from the back. We'll look into that, but for the time being, let's measure some voltages. And I'm sure you cannot see the meter, but what can you do? What can you do? All right, so meter in voltage mode. And let's see, do we have 12 volts here? On the first power connector, yes. The second power connector is the coil getting 12 volts? Yes. And 12 volts down on the bottom, the base, 12 volts. We do have 12 volts. Okay, good. We do have 5 volts. And our 1.8 volt inductor is right here. And we are getting 1.8. So we do have 12, 5, 1.8. And uh, we can maybe measure... 3.3, there's a capacitor all the way down on the bottom here. And 3.25, excellent. What about if we measure the inductor for our VRAM here? We are getting 0 0.81. 0 0.81. It should be around 0 0.7. It starts with 0 0.8, and once the video card is detected, it goes down to 0 0.7. Right now, it's displaying 0 0.81, which means the video card is not being detected, and it's not currently working. What about our VMAM voltage, 1.3? So for the most part, all the voltages are present. I want to look on back of the board where that heat was coming from, looking under a thermal cam. So we have our PEX wheel here, and right on the back is where heat was being generated. What's on the back? So our PEX inductor is here, and what's on the back? Oh, 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 look at this. Look at this. Look at this. That's most likely our problem. What chip is that? UP, this is most likely a VRAM controller. We cannot read the writings on this chip, but I know the UP, I've seen that very same chip 
next to the PEX inductor in the front and not on back of the board. This board, they have it on the back, but usually we see it somewhere here, next to the PEX coil here. So I'm hoping that we can grab that chip from a donor board. Pin number one is on the top, of course, and you can tell by that arrow on the top left. And looking at this chip, there's no way I can read what it says. At the end, it's 280. UP, possibly UP17280. I mean, honestly, I do not have to clean unloaded, but I just want the joints to be clean. Right, so now all we have to do is find that chip. I'm gonna grab a couple of donor boards and I'll be back. So I have this card here, and just like I told you, usually next to the PAX rail, we have that chip next to the coil and not on back of the board, like this video card. So let's take a look and see if that's the same one. I can tell it's 10 pins right here. And what does it say? UP17280, exactly the same chip. Wow, exactly the same chip. That's awesome. I mean, just imagine we did not have this donor board. Then we have to order that part, wait for it. I mean, I cannot avoid from having to order parts for any specific card, but it would be much easier if we had a donor board to extract parts from. It's a lot easier if we had donor boards. I mean, I know it's hard to get donor boards for every make and model, but I get whatever I can. Some customers, if their card is a no fix, they tell us to take the board and use it for parts. And I really appreciate all customers that do that. Let's make sure this chip is soldered on properly. What the... Good luck finding that chip. Is it this one? No. Oh, man. Bummer. Bummer. Oh. Is that it? Man, right there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Back from the dead. Back from ninth dimension. Wow, I found it. I really thought I lost it. It went flying like a ninja. Now you see me, now you don't. All right, and now we're gonna press down and then go like this. Very nice. Very nice. It's 
so the chip is soldered on nicely. We did a great job. Some viewers, they comment and say, why do you always keep saying we? You did it, not we. I is an ugly word. I did it. I'm the one who helped him. I'm the one who gave him the money. It's a very ugly word. All right. Great job. But what good is that job if this card still has issues? Hopefully this card works. I am very optimistic that this card is going to work because all voltage rails are testing good. No issues. And fume extractor off. And this will be the last repair for the day. Either it works or it doesn't. All right. So, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Let's turn the board on. And what do you think? Still the same problem. Still the same problem. Oh man, I really had high hopes for this one. On the VRAM. Okay, uh, 0 0.87. This should be 0 0.7 and not 0 0.87. 0 0.81, all right. So we still have issues. What else could it be? What else could it be? The problem is I got too excited too fast. That's what the problem is. I really thought I got this. Unless this guy is not good to begin with from the donor board, but I highly doubt that. Resistance mode again and... We do not have a short. 41 ohms, we do not have a short. I mean, this area is good. VMAM, I'm getting 72 ohms here, and I'm getting 72 ohms here. Thank you and thank you. I think I'm going to stop working on this card for today. I'll be back on Tuesday. Tomorrow is Sunday, I'm off. Monday, I'm off also. It's a holiday here in the US. And in the meantime, let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Let me know if you have any ideas on what's going on or what we could test next. And maybe I'll do a part two on this repair. So that's it. From now until then, I will see you again in the next video.